Hello friends, um, nice to see you again. Uh, we haven't made any of these video messages uh, in the last little while. Uh, we used to do it every week, now we're doing it once a month, towards the end of the month. And so today what I'd like to bring forth as for your reflection, suggestions on my part, thoughts on my part, uh, are two things. One, the um, question of the new um, diocesan directives and guidelines which are in the context of the present provincial guidelines okay, for public health. And then the second thing I want to talk about is something that's happening in our country, our society, our parishes and especially in our uh, families and it's division and acrimony um, between people over the questions of vaccine, mandates, all of that. So that's what I'd like to talk to you about this morning. In terms of the uh, directives of the diocese, you can certainly go on the diocesan website, most parish websites have it also. Uh, you can read it, but I thought what I'd like to do is to walk through some key points of it, especially in terms of the why, the context in which it comes forth and why this is being asked, suggested. Okay? So, um, the first thing to the point, first point to make very clear is that there is no change in our policy in what I said in terms of that for worship services, for the Sunday Mass, for weekday Masses, we are the Church. We're open to all. All are welcome. Um, come one, come all to the banquet of the Lord. There will be no um, at the door verifying if a person has been vaccinated or not and so can enter or not. No. Now, the implication of that is that, um, you know, going with the healthcare method, uh, measures, and when I say going with, I don't mean um, blindly, powerlessly putting our head down and just, you know, going. No. Intelligently and from the heart wishing the common good, therefore cooperating with public health, trying to understand, and that effort has been constant and is constant. What do you really mean in these measures? Also, if there's things that we find, well, this doesn't quite line up, this measure and this measure, then verification. I'm not going to say pushback, but definitely bringing it to the attention of the, of the public health people. So that's a constant effort. All right, so doing, not closing our doors to anyone, cooperating, cooperating for mutual benefit, uh, the common good, then yes, the present measures for a worship service are 33% of capacity or 25 people, whichever is greater. Well, what that means in, in practice is that for most of our parishes in the countryside and even some in the city, um, large parishes, not an abundance of people, 33% capacity is allows us a pretty well normal life. Uh, larger urban parishes, there they deal with that by multiplying the masses, the number of masses on a weekend or even within a weekday. And thank God for the generosity of our priests in that regard. Now, that's worship service. Then there's another section which is about gatherings within the parish that are not worship services. 
Okay. And those gatherings would be um, what are properly meetings. There may be some prayer in them, but when you get down to it, they're really meetings. Business being dealt with or an activity happening. What am I talking about? Parish Council, Finance Committee, Liturgy Committee, uh, Knights of Columbus, CWL, um, a General Assembly of a parish. Okay, so what's in place there? One, to not have to do a vaccination check. It's limited to 25. Okay? Well, almost all of our parish meetings, whether it's, you know, adult faith education, parents of children being prepared for sacraments, whatever, are less than 25. Okay? Now, there may be some times where it warrants having more than 25. We need it. Um, well, then you have two options. One, to multiply those meetings. You know, one for parents of children preparing for sacraments, A to L, and then so on. Okay? Be creative. <laughs> or, if you really need a lot of people at one gathering, and I have such an occasion coming up soon, I, there is the need of a general assembly in a parish, and we can't put it off forever. It, it's going to happen now because of what's happening in that parish, um, what's being lived uh, for the future. Then, well, it can be by uh, invitation and of people vaccinated, where that vaccination status will be verified at the door, and it live streams so that people who are not vaccinated, and in some cases cannot be vaccinated, um, can participate, but at a distance. So that's the, that's the gist of it all. But it's that basic distinction now, at this time, given our present status in this province, that um, worship services, the Sunday Mass, the weekday Masses, is one domain, open to all, no checking, and the other domain is meetings, gatherings, assemblies, um, classes, whatever. And that's another domain, less than 25, no need to check, mask, distancing, the usual. When it's needed, more than 25, then only the vaccinated, checked at the door, but make absolutely sure that everyone can participate or at least be present to it, even if only by live stream. Okay? Now, the second thing that I wanted to talk to you about, and uh, I'll keep this quick enough, but uh, we've, we've come into a second chapter, if I can put it, of the pandemic. At first, it was COVID and measures that control everyone or restricted, limited for the common good everyone. Now the situation with the 80% and more vaccination is things limited or restricted for one group of people and not the other. So restrictions for those who are not vaccinated and a greater freedom for those who are vaccinated. And now this situation is making a lot of division. The stories I've heard of families who were not able to get all together at Thanksgiving, you know, if, you, if, the, if that family is coming, we're not coming, it's enough to make a guy cry because of the, how do you say, 
the emotions allowed to go to such a level that words and actions are done towards one another that will take maybe years if not generations to heal. And we're doing this, all of us, to one another, in our families, in our parishes. What's the solution? <laughs> it's not an easy solution, but it is what Jesus said. Love one another as I have loved you, as he's on the cross and empties himself for the sake of each and every one of us, dies to himself, that each and every one of us might have life. And so then we think, all right, so what, what does that mean? Well, first of all, that another person is never the other cause or worse, the enemy. Whether it's a brother or sister, adult siblings, whether it's whoever in the parish, each person is a person loved by God who calls me to love that person for the good of all. Well, what's the good of all? There's only one way. We've got to get together. We've got to talk. We especially got to listen. We've got to try to find out in this family, in this parish, what is an accommodation. And accommodation does mean compromise. And compromise means, in part, dying to self. <laughs> to come to something where what we aim for is a loving arrangement. And the most important word in that is loving, not the arrangement. <laughs> yes, we have to come to an arrangement. But loving. Keeping us united in the love of God. Easy answer? There's no easy answers. Um, one step, two step, three step? No, it ain't that simple. In fact, there is only one way. Love, Christ's love, that brings forth the fruits of the Holy Spirit, peace, joy, patience, uh, long-suffering, endurance, and faithfulness, all of that in everyone. So we need to think about this and speak about it with one another, with all others of our family or of our parish or in society, and walk the way of love, walk the way of Christ. There is no other way. But God is carrying us and guiding us in this. So we put it in the hands of God who guides us, we pray, and we bless Him for wherever that love and compassion is lived. Thank you.